I have eaten grapes as big as plums on high-speed Japanese trains. I have flown by helicopter from Nice to Monaco and dined at Louis Cannes. I have even left Russia on my way to Israel, only to end up leaving Rome bound for New York. My life is largely the history of my travels, my origins and destinations stretching me over continents and time zones. And yet none of these journeys have taken me as far as the road trip from San Jose to Antioch. <laughs> Travel is a game of risks and opportunities, the physical challenges of getting from one place to another, the uncertainties of what you'll find when you get there, the risks you take in, plunging, in plugging yourself into a new culture, new people, and new places. Some destinations are, notably, are notable simply for how damned far we've traveled from home. For others, it's what happens when we arrive that matters most. And sometimes we travel because we've decided not to. That was me in August of 2005. I had recently told myself that I wasn't going to travel to meet women anymore. <laughs> No more importing my dates from Mendocino or Santa Cruz counties. From then on, my dating would be strictly local. Santa Clara County would be my relationship Serengeti. And I would be the sleek cheetah, sizing up the lithe gazelles and cavorting wildebeests, metaphorically speaking. Hopefully more on the gazelle side of things, but honestly, who hasn't availed himself of a wildebeest or two? On a cold, moonless night away from the eyes of mocking hyenas. By hyenas, I mean friends from school. Let me know if I'm losing you. I settled into a Sunday night prowl around the wilds of Craigslist. Yes, Craigslist, that tangled underbrush of need, lust, and desire, with just a sliver of sunlight, hope, breaking through the forbidding canopy of raunch. <laughs> Idly reading the ads in the casual encounter section that evening, okay, it was night, <laughs> I came across an intriguing headline. And although there wasn't a photo attached to the post, usually an automatic skip for me, I was drawn in by the... <laughs> I was drawn in by the direct and almost challenging nature of the headline. Ooh, ah. Get out. <laughs> W4M. Direct, bold, nay, brazen in her desire, demanding. A woman after my own heart. And thank goodness there was a woman looking for a man. I was hooked, and I clicked through the actual post, which was no less direct. Not looking for a relationship, just looking to hook up. Sent photos of the punim and the putts, the face and the junk for the goyama. <laughs> Follow directions or get kicked to the curb before you get up to the sidewalk. And all this in properly punctuated, correctly conjugated, well-written prose. Like Mary Shelley looking for her very own new Prometheus. BAM! <laughs> so that's how an Amazon writes a Craigslist ad, I thought. And what else could I do? Naturally, I had to respond. To follow her explicit requests in abrupt direction. To submit photos accompanied by muscular yet graceful prose, or a couple of sentences about how I liked her ad, and here's those pictures you wanted. I mean, this is Craigslist we're talking about. Off went my response through the ether, and, well, frankly, I forgot about it. It wasn't the only ad I saw that night, and it probably wasn't the only one I responded to. <laughs> the next day at lunch, my coworkers and I got onto the subject of the perfect first date. The girls talked about roses, and having the guy plan the whole thing out in detail in advance. The guys talked about, well, nothing that HR would approve of in our company lunchroom, but suffice it to say, all roads led to Caligula's Rome. When my turn came, I rattled off the correct answer. You only need two things for a perfect first date. Your date needs to show up, and she needs to leave. Everything else is gravy. <laughs> There were protests, accusations, confusion, everything ensued, and I explained. There is no date if she doesn't show up. Fair enough. And if she doesn't leave, it's not a date, it's a proposal. You gotta come, and you gotta go. How unpopular I was, yet how prophetic. When I got home from work and checked my emails, I saw that the Amazon had sent me a reply. Apparently, I'd met her conditions. Here was her phone number. 
I had leave to call her, which I did that night to hear her clear, strong voice for the first time. And apparently during American Idol, I'll call you back in an hour, she said. Okay. <laughs> what a pleasant way to get blown off, I thought. But just as she promised, she called back in an hour. The conversation went well and even included an apparently sincere, even if nothing happens, we can totally be friends. Um, we didn't meet on Craigslist activity partners. <laughs> it was casual encounters. <laughs> There's only one kind of friend there, friend with benefits. And there was a hitch. When she found out that I was in San Jose, she claimed that I was geographically undesirable. <laughs> So apparently booty calls were geographically narrow windows of opportunity, like launch windows or arrow slits and castle walls. Mm -hmm. Why don't you let me worry about that since I'll be doing the driving? I countered, uh -huh. touche. We set a time to meet the next day. Now, at this juncture, I thought it wise to look up where exactly Antioch was. <laughs> I knew it was somewhere in the East Bay, but where exactly? Google Maps showed a little dot barely fit on the same screen as San Jose. <laughs> it wasn't Sacramento or anything, but still, I had inadvertently broken my no foreign strange rule. <laughs> broken it before I even started following it. I was, as always, I was ahead of my time. The next day, I was driving up to Antioch with a bottle of wine, a bouquet of flowers, and a single condom in my pocket. <laughs> Apparently, the Safeway by my house had run on magnums. And they didn't have my size either. <laughs> Although technically only 65 miles away, I felt like I was trapped in Zeno's paradox. When I got to 580 from my house, I realized I was only halfway there. When I got to Highway 4, I realized I was only halfway from 580 to Antioch. And so it went. No matter how much closer I got, it seemed I could only cut the distance in half. <laughs> Surely punishment for breaking my own rule. Well, finally I arrived. Apparently a bottle of wine and flowers are not standard booty call items. The Amazon was pleased and a bit taken aback with my mix of naivete and insouciance. We retired to her room. This was Craigslist after all. And let's just say that all I recall from the was Enya on repeat on the CD player, <laughs> countless ecstatic violations of mind and body, and lying in a heap on the floor after half a dozen supernova orgasms. The Amazon left no stone unturned. We lay in bed afterwards, our arms and legs intertwined, our breath coming in even rhythm synchronized to our heartbeats. The room was lit only by candles with citrus and sweet aromas, Slowly, I drifted off to sleep. Hey, don't fall asleep, said the Amazon. Well, uh, well, what? It was 2.30 in the morning. Yeah, but you've got to go. You can't stay over. It's our first date. Date? Seriously? Seriously. But it's late. Yeah, it's 2.30 and I've got to go to work tomorrow. Well, okay. I rolled off the bed and into my clothes, quite the worst for wear. You're sweet. You should call me, said the Amazon. I was still humming like a high tension wire as I poured myself into my black Prius. The trip back would be a piece of cake. Straight roads, no late night traffic, and I was wired from, well, you see the supernova orgasms above. But suffice it to say that with massive construction and detours, and without a GPS, that quick trip quickly turned into a maze of confusion which seemed to extend indefinitely. <laughs> Finally, I thought I was just gonna pass out right there in the car, and that my night of Amazonian passion would be my last on Earth, <laughs> as I drowsed at the wheel and slammed into the center divider at 75 miles an hour. There had to be some way to stay awake. And what's an oversexed, overstimulated guy to do? Oh yes, it's true. The only way for me to stay up till I got home was to stay up till I got home. Twice. And when I finally ended my journey, I fell into a deep and abiding sleep. It was worth the trip. The perfect date with the perfect girl. 
After that, there was only one thing to do. I married her. Oh, my God.